Today's video is going to be talking you through initially a bit of information and then following that some exercises related to the initial stages of rehabilitating from adductor related groin pain. The reason I say adductor related groin pain is that in 2014 the Doha Agreement came out which tried to streamline the terminology which medical professionals, physiotherapists, osteopaths, chiropractors etc use to try and define or diagnose a patient. Previously to that, it was very, very convoluted and very complex, and a lot of the diagnoses were just different names for the same things, essentially. So, adductor-related problems can either be acute or they can be long-standing. When they come on acutely, there's usually an obvious mechanism to it. So, you might be sprinting, you might be suddenly changing direction. Um, with these, sometimes you hear a bit of a pop or a click, or sometimes it's just the pain straight after the activity itself. Um, I know I strained mine when I was at school and I heard a massive pop, you know straight away that you've done some damage. The alternative to this is degenerative related and that is where actually it's just come on over a period of time and uh, maybe there's some disrepair within the tendon previously so you've had a bit of an injury that hadn't been rehabbed or hadn't recovered properly and maybe that you didn't know about it but over time this wear and tear has just built up into it and led to this degenerative issue. So most people when they get an adductor strain they tend to get this pain up and right into the top of the groin. The two defining features for a practitioner are pain with palpation or pain with pressure of the adductors and then pain with resisted adduction. So when you get the muscles to do the movement and that reproduces the symptoms. But you also find, especially in the initial stages, that the pain in the adductor is significantly worse after exercise. You can find that during the exercise itself, if it's gentle exercise, the pain is fairly low level and it might actually disappear during the exercise. But then following either later that evening or the next day, it may get a little bit worse. You may also find this weakness, so you might be struggling to walk correctly, you might be struggling to go up steps, etc. Anything that involves the stabilisation or this activation of the adductors can cause some of the symptoms that we're experiencing. And the other side is there may be some heat or swelling in the initial stages of it. Um, it's usually pretty sensitive for you to touch as well. These exercises that we're going to be going through today are going to be for what we class as the subacute period. So the acute is the first five days in this instance, where actually a lot of it is about making sure that you're icing, making sure that you're just trying to immobilise it as much as possible in terms of strenuous activity. You may still be able to do things which aren't pain aggravating, but you want to avoid anything that aggravates your symptoms. This is for days 5 to 10 or days 5 to 15, so it's the subacute period. Exercises number 1 and 2, you're going to need something like a TheraBand ball, a foam roller, a football, something that you can just squeeze to provide you with a little bit of resistance. So for the first exercise, pop the ball in between your ankles, lay down onto your back. And the idea being that you're just gently squeezing your feet together so that you feel this activation going through your groin, through your inside of your thigh, as the muscle does contract. Initially, I recommend holding this for 5 seconds. You can eventually build up to 25 seconds to 30 second holds. Release slowly after that 5 seconds. Give yourself 5 seconds break, and then contract again. And for this instance, you're going to do it somewhere between 5 to 10 times. Again, start smaller and build it up. Exercise number 2, very, very similar. But this time, you're going to be using it in between your knees, bent knees, go back again, and just squeeze in through your knees this time, so you're trying to bring them together. Once again, hold for five seconds, release after five seconds. You can again complete this up to 25 to 30 seconds per squeeze, but start with five and build it up by five seconds each time. And again, do it for somewhere between five repetitions and 10 repetitions of that exercise. So easiest way of activating this muscle, as you'd have seen in other videos, create a diamond, pop the top of the diamond onto your belly button, the bottom of the diamond facing down towards your groin, and you're gonna try and pretend that you've got a marble in the inside of this diamond. You're gonna pull your stomach backwards. As you do that, you should feel that actually the marble would almost be orientating down towards your chest, and then go back up. If you then go the other way, just so you can make sure that you're doing the right movement, so one should be arching your back, one should be flattening your back. So with this transverse abdominis activation, what you want to do for the initial period is hold it for five slow breaths, both in and out. Idea being that you should be able to keep the core 
contraction whilst you are doing your normal breathing, but really try and focus on it coming from your stomach as opposed to your chest. Stage two of this exercise is focused still around using the transverse abdominis. So you're going to activate in the same way as you were just now. You're going to have both legs bent, but this time one at a time. You're going to straighten one knee and back to normal. Straighten the other knee, back to normal, making sure that at all points, this transverse abdominis, you can feel the contraction coming through it to support. Initially, do it as a repetition exercise. So you're going to do seven to eight times. And then as it becomes easier with the last exercise, hold it for five seconds and back to normal. Do the same again, hold it for five seconds and back to normal. The third part again is get that core activation. And this is a crunch or a sit up. So you're starting to activate your rectus abdominis, your six pack muscles, whilst maintaining this transverse abdominis activation. So I always find hands either on your temples or hands on um, your shoulders are one of the easiest points. So you get that core activation. Once you know you've got it, you can then move your hands and just lift up so that your shoulders come off the ground. Hold for five seconds and back down. Make sure you maintain that core activation, that core, that transverse abdominis activation, and then go back up. Hold for five seconds. And back down. The next exercise is a mobilization, a harmonic exercise. So start with standing on your non-painful leg and just gently rocking the painful leg forward and backwards. So you're keeping it in this one plane of motion. It's a mobilization exercise, so do it somewhere between 15 to 20 repetitions. Swap onto the other side, do the same thing. You may find the balance is worse, or you may find that actually it's more uncomfortable to stand on that leg with the stabilization. Make sure you only do this exercise to what is pain free. So if it does start to hurt, take a rest and then repeat again. Focus on that core activation again. So pop your hands onto the core. You're going to take your leg out to the side. So this is your painful leg. And then slowly bring it back in. Take it out to the side again. And slowly bring it back in. And take it out again. So you're keeping your toe very lightly pressed on the floor at all points. Repeat that five times initially, take a break, and then if you feel comfortable to, repeat again. But as you go through that day five to day 15, you'll find that you're able to do more repetitions with significantly less pain as you go through the period. So the next stage of the series is going to be uploaded a week today. So the idea being that we're then going to take you through the exercise for the intermediate stage. So somewhere from week two to week four. Um, this is going to then be starting to introduce exercises where you're using gravity as a resistance. You're also going to be starting to do more flexibility oriented exercises, for example, hip flexor stretches and adductor stretches in various positions. So if you are based in the Leeds area, the North Yorkshire area, I am based in both Knaresborough and in Leeds at the moment. So if you do have any questions, any problems, please do get in contact and we'll see if we can get you booked in for assessment and if appropriate then for treatment. Thank you very much. Take care.